Good morning. Please join me for our opening prayer. O oh God, we gather together in your presence with expectation. We are hungry for an encounter with you and eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, this is Judy, and I'm to read the scripture for today. It's uh, from Matthew chapter 13, 1 through 9, and then it will also be verses 18 through 23. It's the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the parable of the sower explained. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, 
that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's with great excitement that I am here to introduce our new minister, William T. Cheney. Reverend Cheney, who invites us to call him Pastor William or Pastor Cheney, comes with many talents and gifts, and these, as you'll see, are reflected in his wide range of experiences. He originally comes from the Buckeye State, which helps to explain his fondness for Ohio State football. After a couple years at the University of Cincinnati, Pastor Cheney received an undergraduate degree from the University of Georgia in organizational communication. He also has a master's degree from the Candler School of Theology at Emory University. His formal education continues as he completes his doctorate with the Asbury Theological Seminary, and he is an ordained elder with the United Methodist Church. Pastor Cheney has used his education over the last 20 plus years to build a portfolio that speaks to many of the needs and desires of our church. He served as a district superintendent, a minister of music, pastor to churches both small and large, and as a consultant to multiple Methodist congregations and conferences. His coaching approach is focused on identifying and building the strengths of individuals and organizations to empower them to achieve their goals. 
it is perhaps not a surprise that today's sermon is based on the parable of the sower and the seed. Pastor Cheney comes to us with his wife, Michelle, and daughter, Courtney. The Reverend Dr. Michelle is with the Arlington UMC District and serves there as the coordinator of church development. Courtney graduated from high school this year and like many prospective college freshmen is looking to find out how her school of first choice is going to open and provide instruction. In our Zoom meetings and phone conversations prior to this morning, it's clear that we share a love of good food something that Methodists don't take lightly. I know we all look forward to a time when our congregation can indulge that shared interest in person. But in the meantime, I invite you to find a way to say hello to the Cheneys, whether that's by phone or social media or snail mail. Please welcome them to our church and to our community. Hello to the members, the friends, and the family of Arlington Forest United Methodist Church. My name is R William Cheney, and I am your new pastor. I'm excited about being here, about the appointment, about our opportunity to serve this community. I'm going to ask that you pray with me, pray for me, and um, I'll hopefully be getting in touch and talking to many of you all. Since we're not going to be meeting in the sanctuary very soon, I hope to call each person, have personal Zoom calls. Uh, so we can get to know each other. Um, if you don't mind, feel free to call the office um, and we'll set up an appointment where we can sit down and talk via Zoom or some other virtual method. For this moment though, this is gonna be my first sermon here with you all. I'm in the midst of packing and it's an exciting time to be packing, of course, but I'm also at the place where I've been packing and I'm done packing and saying in about 24 hours, I'm gonna to have to unpack. So I'm excited about this moment to stop and study God's word for a few minutes with you. I ask that you pray with me. God, we give you thanks for being an awesome God, for being a God who even in the midst of what could seem to be chaotic, you bring peace. So bring peace to this moment, bring your word to these, your people, bless it so that they may go forth and serve you. And we can do that together all in Jesus' name. Amen. The title today is very, very simple. It just says it's time to multiply. And I want to say the scripture has already been read into your hearing, but I would like to just read the focus scripture for us today, which comes from Matthew uh, 13, verse 23. It simply says this, but as far as Sorry, but as for what was sown on good soil, there is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another case 60, and in another case 30. As I said before the message, it's time to multiply. See, if you are in any major city, Arlington or anywhere, where there's just a lot of, of buildings, you probably are not familiar with this whole thing of being in an agricultural community. In fact, this whole process of, of, of planting, sowing, nurturing, and harvesting is probably not a part of your everyday living experience. But for Jesus and the, those first century disciples, this was the culture in which they lived. So as Jesus is telling this parable, he is also relating to people in a story that they can all understand. I think that even if you're living in the city, this one idea may be able to resonate with you. I have found it difficult to be in a place where the grass grows lush. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm that guy. You see, we, we moved into this place not too long ago, and, and, and so we wanted the grass to grow. Michelle and I looked around and our neighbors had this great lush green grass growing. And so for the first year, we said, we're just going to get some grass seed and throw it out there and look for it to next spring, having a great new lawn. Well, for those who know about that process, know that that wasn't really that fruitful. 
In fact, we threw all of those seeds out and we hoped for the best but it didn't yield a lot of grass. You see, th there was a process we need to go through. And so when we had a conversation with someone who actually understood, he said, you first gotta prepare the, the yard. You have to aerate it. And then you throw down the seeds. And then after you throw down the seeds, you throw some fertilizer on top so that the birds and the, the, the bunnies that are hopping all around will not eat up all of your seed. And we were like, wow, nobody told us all that. So we tried that the next year. And guess what? The grass grew because the process of having fertile ground and having the seeds fall in that ground in such a way where the sunshine and the rain were able to help the grass grow made the difference. As Jesus is telling this story, this, this parable, he's also relating to everyone around him about how they can receive the word of God, the scriptures, the teachings about that, that were a little bit different than what had been experienced previously. And so this is where we start our story. You say, you see, I'm sorry, the entire process of getting the ground ready was very important to the final outcome. And what we want to do is run into the situation, say, we're going to listen to the scripture. We're going to have a great time in worship. And we run out and we wonder why sometimes we're not making more disciples. We're not reaching more people for Jesus Christ. And I say it's because our lives in some way reflect the different types of ground that Jesus described in the text. You see, in the text, he describes four specific types of experiences. There's one where the seed is thrown off and thrown out and immediately the enemy comes and takes it away. Then he says some seed is on stony ground. People get excited for it, but then it blows away. Some in thorny ground, they actually get excited, they get started, but then it gets choked out. But the good soil is the soil where the seeds are thrown out and there's a multiplication of fruit and some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. This is what we're going for. This is what we want our lives to be, where as we get into the scriptures, as we learn how to live out the love of Jesus Christ, as we learn how to engage the, the grace of Jesus Christ, as we learn how to be embodied by Jesus Christ in the world in which we live, there are others who are drawn to that because of the word falling onto our fertile ground, not just hearing it, but then understanding it. That, that's what the scripture says. It says, those who heard and understood, they bore fruit. So one of the challenges is, are we not just hearing God's word, but are we getting the understanding necessary to go forth and multiply? See, th that is just something. How do we prepare? To be pre to be, how do we get prepared to go forth and hear God's word in such a way where our lives multiply, making disciples, multiply the love, stand against injustice, be the men and women of God who build families, who then engage other families around the love of Jesus Christ. This becomes the question of our time. Because if we sit back and look in the midst of this pandemic, this health pandemic, we also see a pandemic of racial injustice. As we sit back and look at the challenges around this world, we see that there are health disparities, there's economic disparities. And in all of it, we're asking the question, how do we become the body of Christ that makes a difference in all of this chaos? How do we have our lives so fertile that even when the seed comes, then it becomes the multiply. You know what? I am so glad that you all are asking good questions. <sighs> the answer is not easy, but the answer is very clear. How do we prepare our hearts to bear fruit? Number one, we engage in the prayers, a discipline of prayer that invites God to participate in every area of our life to have obedience in such a way that even in the midst of the challenge, we're following Christ, not the crowd. See, that's the big thing. So many people get caught up in following the crowd. They forget that the word gives us guidance and how to live so that we are able to bear fruit. And that comes because we have prayer that invites God in to our very existence. 
And then we want to be present with God's people. We, you just can't know Jesus Christ in a vacuum. It's about being around all of God's people for fellowship, for worship, for discipleship. These are done in community. These are done where we all share together. We hold each other accountable. We, we, we walk the walk with someone. It's a journey. It's not just an event. It's a journey. And it requires others to walk with us. It then requires that we give some gifts, our financial gifts, our time, our talent, to the building of the community so that as the fruit, as the word comes, we bear fruit that is kingdom type of fruit. Then we get into service. And see, it's easy just to say we want to serve those who are hurting, those who are marginalized, those who are without, but are we also willing to stand up for those being oppressed? See, when we, when we really get serious about serving, we stand up not only just to help those who are hurting, but to stand up against those who are injustice is taking place. We, we get to a place where we stand up and say, it's not right to have children locked up, separated from their parents, because that's just immoral. It, we get to the point when we say it's not right that, that there's a racial profiling with this police department and those who do bad things as police are not then prosecuted. It, it, it is just the right thing to talk about and the right thing to do when there has been injustices because someone because of their gender doesn't get a promotion or because of their gender, they, they are held back in their career. The injustice is when we begin to speak up and partner with those who have been oppressed to go forth. So when we're serving, it's also about speaking out the injustice. And finally, it's about witnessing. It's about sharing the gospel. See, this glorious gospel that talks about we serve a risen Savior, it, this is something that, that, that many church members are shy to do because they don't want to hurt someone else's feelings. Well, in the first century church, it was all about uh, their witness. Their witness is that we're different than the rest of the world. Their witness was that we're willing to take a stand, that although there was a mighty empire, uh, empire of Rome that would be oppressive, we're gonna stand and operate not from the fear tactics of the empire, but out of the love ethic of Jesus Christ. It, it, the, the early church clearly understood that their lives were the witness. And so I get excited every Easter about a song that should be our daily clear, uh, our daily uh, pro proclamation of who we are. It says, I serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. He walks with me and talks with me all along the way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? Because he lives in my heart. This is the clarion call that we should be proclaiming in every area of our lives because it happens because the word is strong in us that we are fertile ground and then we share that with others. You see, the thing is when we are prospering because of God's word, then the church is prospering. When we're not prospering, then the church is not prospering. You see, if we're going to multiply, if we're going to grow, if we're going to be a healthy community of Christ, it means that each person within the community has to get to a place where their lives are fertile ground to share this goodness of Jesus Christ with all who are around them. Like the scripture said, when we get to that place, in some cases, there will be a hundredfold return. In others, there will be a sixty. But in some, there'll be 30. But the key is there will be a return for those who hear, understand the word of God. This is the word of God and thanks be to God. I ask that during this week, you begin to pray about how your life can be fruitful soil so that we can, as a church community, go forth together and serve in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God be with you.